What you reading? The Bible. Hmm. It's a good book. What are you up to? Chapter 18 of Proverbs. Should we read it to everyone? Hi, oh, so people. Hi. Oh. Welcome to our Thirsty. Oh, your Jess. And your Sam. <laughs> Sammy. Sammy with an I. <laughs> oh, wow. Chapter 18. Straight into it. Through desire, a man, having separated himself, seeking, seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. A fool hath no delight in understanding, but that his heart may discover itself. When the wicked cometh, then cometh also contempt, and with ignominy reproach. The words of a man's mouth are as deep waters, and the wellspring of wisdom as a flowing brook. It is not good to accept the person of the wicked, to overthrow the righteous in judgment. A fool's lips enter into contention, and his mouth calleth for strokes. A, fool, a fool's mouth is his distraction, and his lips are the snare of his soul. The words of a talebearer are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Ouch. Verse 9, he also that is slothful in his work is brother to him that is a great waster. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. The rich man's wealth is his strong city and as an high wall is his own conceit. Before destruction, the heart of man is haughty and before honour is humility. He that answereth a matter before he heareth it Sometimes is me. <laughs> it is folly and shame unto him. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear. The heart of the prudent getteth knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeketh knowledge. A man's gift maketh room for him, and bringeth him before great men. He that is first in his own cause seemeth just, but his neighbour cometh and searcheth him. The lot causeth contentions to cease and parteth between the mighty. A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city, and their contentions are like the bars of a castle. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtaineth favour of the Lord. The poor useth entreaties, but the rich answereth roughly. A man that hath friends must shew himself friendly, and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Have you heard that verse before, Samantha? Yes. What do you think about that? Well, I can't disagree. <laughs> <laughs> a man that hath friends must shew himself friendly. That reminds me of when we're looking at Paul's epistles and it talks about uh, a, de a bishop and a deacon. Mm -hmm. They must show themselves to be hospitable. Oh. That's a requirement. So having that welcomingness <clears throat> Which you into your home. You wouldn't really think is an important thing. Like I, to be honest, have never really valued friends. I've always been a very independent person and I, you know, I guess I was pretty close with my family when I was younger. Yeah. We moved around a lot. I didn't really have a lot of close friends except for my cousins. Yeah. But it's not until my recent years that I've really valued having friends because, well, to be honest, I, I didn't have any wise friends. It makes a difference, Did I? Eh? It does make a difference. Thanks, Jess. And, and those friends stick closer than a brother. Yeah. That's pretty pretty cool, actually. Well, you are closer to me than, than my sister. And you're closer to me than my sister. Thanks, God, for another sister. And this is, and this is what happens, you know. Sometimes in life there's ups and downs and you don't even know why things necessarily happen the way they do. But God will always give you... He'll cushion you. He'll give you lots of things around you to support you because the righteous walk uprightly. And you can't if you're on your own. Mm. So um, that's a gift that I've discovered that the more I get closer to the Lord and want to please him and not so much worry about what people think, 
of me on the outward or about my decisions, if I'm trying to just please the Lord, which he's asking us to do, that's what yeah. God's asking us to do, to, to, to have him as our focus, then he won't leave you on your own. Yeah. He will sustain and support you. And you know what? We've got, we've got the Bible to read, which mm-hmm. is a, a, an amazing blessing. Mm-hmm. We can pray which is another amazing blessing. Absolutely. But what a joy it is. And if you haven't had this, you're missing out. Like what a joy it is to be able to talk about God's word with people who believe it. Yeah. And are trying to understand it. Yeah. It's such, uh, you know, it's indescribable. It is. That's, that's really the true worth of a friend. Yeah. Yeah. It's very special. And sometimes you don't actually know until you experience it what you've actually been missing yeah. out on before. It's priceless. So I know that there's many out there that would agree with us. And there might be some of you out there that don't know what that's like. And that's what you mentioned, Sam. Um, pray about it. Ask the Lord to help you find those people that you can get alongside and they can get yeah. alongside you. That's what we did. That's right. We prayed about it. Yeah. And and God will bring the unity. That's what he wants for the body of Christ. There's so many times you see disunity and it's just, it's heartbreaking. But if you, if you elevate the word instead of elevating yourself, which, you know, we're always working on that because we're all humanity. We're always thinking about ourselves, right? But if we elevate this first, he will then satisfy you with what you need. Verse 2, a fool hath no delight in understanding. So we've heard that in different ways before. Yeah. But the next bit, but that his heart may discover itself. So is that saying he only has delight in giving himself his heart's desires, which are, which are selfish? What does it say about the heart? deceitful above all things yeah and so it doesn't matter how much of a good a person we are if we don't want to delight in understanding and we want to satisfy our own heart we'll be we'll be a fool and you'll be disappointed yeah because you don't have any wisdom and that's why there's probably so many self-help books out there guys none of them will satisfy you and help your heart more than this one Um, ignominy do you know what it means well I had to look it up oh I'm glad you did because I had a note to look it up and I didn't Um, I just got to try and remember what it means now I think it's open shame is that right that sounds right that sounds right again (laughs) I feel like it's It's like it's like being famous for being a a not good person I think oh okay right I'd never even heard the word until I was reading it the other day and I was talking to my hubby about it and we're like, is, is there not a word? At maybe I'm... Public shame or disgrace. Yep. I mean, ignorance. Yeah. Is that... Ig, I think that prefix ig means it's a bad thing. Right. Ignominy. Ig. Yeah. Not a good thing, hey? What else have we got, Sam? A brother offended. That's where I was. <laughs> it's harder to be one than a strong city. That is, can you even imagine? What is the strongest city you know? Uh, like if you were to defeat. I no, I mean, it would be one of those. A city. It would be one of those medieval cities, wouldn't it? That you see surrounded by walls and. Yeah. Arrow people. What are Moats. they called? Arches. Arrow people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like a Robin Hood situation. Mo- yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. A brother offended is harder to be one than a strong city. It says something else about being offended later on, doesn't yep. it? Yeah. Can you imagine, though, like if we were to remind ourselves of that all the time, about not being offended, how many times in ourselves have we just arced up? Started to arc up about something. Yeah. That's not right to be offended about. I mean, if someone if someone is like speaking poorly about the word of God in a very ignorant in a very ignorant way, I do get 
a little bit offended yeah, yeah. because I love what's right. And yeah. the more I learn about this book, the more I, it doesn't need defending, but you almost want to defend it. But about being offended about something else, I mean. Yeah. But you do think about it. It's quite a picture, isn't it? A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city and mm-hmm. their contentions are like the bars of a castle. So we do feel ourselves putting up, I do it especially, I'm building walls. If yeah. I'm feeling there's an attack coming, I'm building these walls up so that I can protect myself and you can be not just offended but defensive yeah. um, and even attacking wow. before you're attacked Yeah, just to get on the offensive right yeah yeah it's like the bars of a castle so we need to be aware of that and be knocking down our walls yeah as we're building them that's great because we're told to be soft and have a soft word for people that are coming Mm. against us not to be offended and building walls up um my this is my favorite One of my favourite verses ever, and we've talked about it a lot, but I'm getting it wrong because I say life and death are in the power of the tongue. And I've checked, and it's not written life and death anywhere else that I could find. Okay. So I've just been remembering it wrong. But death death and life life. are in the power of the tongue. Interesting that death is written first. Yeah. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. That's so if you love death yeah. or if you love life, yes. you're giving power to it and eating the fruit of That's it. That's the first time I've read the whole verse. That is amazing. That reminds me of, do you know that um, saying, it's a motivational saying, people use it, probably personal trainers. Huh. Whether you believe you can or you believe you can't, you're, you're right. right. So I think that's attributed to Henry Ford, the guy who made the cars. Oh, right. But it's a phrase I used to use all the time. Did you? But that's That's where that phrase comes from. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. And whichever one you love. You're going to eat the fruit. That's what you're going to eat the fruit of. And you know what? It doesn't say what type of fruit it is. Well, dead fruit is rotten. So Yuck. Oh. That's for the compost, not for eating. The worms will enjoy that. And that's where death is, really. Wow. Decomposing things. That's a really, this is a great, this is a great chapter. How about the next one? Who still oh. findeth a wife? Findeth a good thing. You're a thing. You're a pretty good <laughs> thing, mind. Sam. Don't mind being a thing. <laughs> and, and obtaineth favour of the Lord. And if my husband has favour favor of the Lord, doesn't even say you have to be a good wife. Just any old wife is a good, <laughs> is a good thing. So... look it's our responsibility as wives to be good wives and the only way that we can actually be a good wife is by putting good things inside of us to make sure that we're eating the right words a virtuous woman is a crown to her husband oh beautiful we don't really use crowns anymore maybe we should okay um yeah, we could do like a garland, you know, a, a crown of botanicals. Yeah, it's pretty. Or um, something more long-lasting, like a willow. Oh yeah, great, awesome. There was another one that I wanted to talk about, and I can't remember where it is. So about friendly friends. Oh, I love that. But mm-hmm. no, um, it was about what you're going to say. The rich answereth roughly. <laughs> Um, what are you going to say? A man's belly is satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. Well, this wasn't it, but let's talk about this one, verse 6. A fool's lips enter into contention. How many times do some people, especially little tiny people, like to debate? They love the contention. And then mm. you have to train them that it's not about debating with your little friends. Mm. Um. Lachey used to love doing that. Mm. Sam, we're going to play a game. You say yes, and I'll say no. Ready? Oh, yes. No. Yes. No. What? No. Oh. <laughs> she used to play these games That's with us. That's not a fun game. 
And it was like contrary. She just loved being contrary, which in a way is contentious, right? Trying to stir something up. And then the next part of it, and his mouth calleth for strokes. I was going to ask you, what does that mean? Well, strokes makes me think of strokes of the whip. Uh, on you your don't tongue. whip someone in the face, do you? Well, I think they did that to Jesus. Oh, dear. Mm. Let me see. I want to look it up. The words, this is verse 8, the words of a talebearer are as wounds and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. We're learning so much about our tongue. We're learning so much about what we speak about, what we think about. That is such a visual that when you talk about somebody else, not to their good, they are wounds that go down into the innermost parts of the belly. I'm not sure if it would just be for the other person, but definitely for your own soul. What, which verse is that? Eight? Mm-hmm. They go down into... Well, that's what I was thinking as I read that as well. Is it talking about the tail bearer? Tail bearer's belly? I think it would be both because it does... They're bearing the fruit of their own words yeah. as well. Yeah. I mean, if you're not careful, you can let that affect you too, even if you're not the tail bearer. But, um... Uh, strokes oh, does yeah. mean violence. You're calling to be getting a punch in the face. Oh, wow. Wow, there you go. So just best not to. (laughs) Best to have... Don't be contentious. Our words need to be full of life and then we'll get the fruit of that. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Yes, you got that around the right way. I'm trying to remember that now. It's really great. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. What a great way to finish this. Are you going to eat some fruit today? Yeah. I'm going to have life-giving fruit. How about you? Beautiful Lexi and Troy gave us a pawpaw, a papaya last night. So I'm going to eat some of that because I've decided I quite like it. It's very delicious. They grow really good ones. They do. I'll share it with you. You should keep the seeds if there is any. No, they don't have seeds. Well, that's a poop. I know. Is that allowed to say? No, bad bad words. Beep! Don't say that. Say something life giving. Well, that's well, poop is life giving because we know the birds <laughs> poop down the seed and things grow that's just from right. that. So that is a life giving thing. Great. <laughs> don't don't take what's good and make it bad. You mm. know, in the Bible, I said this to someone the other day. They baked bread over poop. Oh, didn't they? Yeah, Ezekiel. That's right. that's right. And there's actually Ezekiel bread out there today. Exactly. Uh, I wonder if many people actually understand that when they purchase that bread. It's not just a healthy special bread to eat. Yeah. It is quite delicious. I don't think they cook it over poop. I don't think you're allowed to do that anymore. You're probably not. But that's okay. Um, So there we go. Mary Hearts. (laughs) We started with Mary Hearts. Mary Hearts was yesterday. Oh. Yeah, we're talking about life today. But you know what? It continues. We talked about life and we ended in poop. (laughs) That's okay. That's okay. We are very grateful that you joined us today. Thanks so much. Choose life. Have a great day.